Welcome to the chapter about the cell. So this chapter, we're just basically going to go through the parts of the cell, how cells work, um, and talk about each of the little organelles, which are kind of like organs in our body, but organs for the cell. So first thing we're going to start with is talking about general characteristics that all cells have to have and um, kind of go through those. So the first thing that they're all going to have is going to be genetic material in the form of DNA. Um, now, there are two types of cells. There are prokaryotes and there are eukaryotes. Prokaryotes are going to be bacteria and they're going to be very, very small and simpler. And eukaryotes are going to be the kind of cells that we have and they're going to be a little bit bigger. They're going to have organelles and all sorts of stuff like that. So, um, in prokaryotes, since they don't have a nucleus, their genetic information is going to be found just in an area of the cell called the nucleoid region. In a eukaryote cell, which are the cells like we have, it's going to be found in the nucleus. But either way, no matter what, both of those types of cells are going to have DNA. And that's one thing that they're all going to have in common. The next thing that they're going to have is cytoplasm. So cytoplasm is going to kind of be what's all around the organelles. So it's kind of what fills the cell. And you can think of it like if you were to squish a cell, what would squirt out of it? And so that's going to have like carbohydrates in it and amino acids and all sorts of important things that it can use to make different stuff. Then um, the plasma membrane is going to be the third thing that all types of cells are going to have. And that's going to be really, really, really important because that's going to determine what kinds of things can come into the cell and what can come out of the cell. So that's really, really, really important. And the next chapter we get to, we're going to talk about how the membrane works and how it allows certain things to go through and other things not to and those types of things. Um, so the membrane's going to have proteins in it that are going to help. And like I said, we'll learn that in a later chapter too. Then the last thing that all cells are going to have is going to be ribosomes. Ribosomes are going to be what we use to take our DNA and actually make it into something physical. So your DNA is just the blueprint. And then to take that information and make it into something real, we need ribosomes to do that. So if we go through again, the four things that all cells are going to have, genetic material in the form of DNA, cytoplasm, which is going to be that chemical um, kind of soup inside the cell, plasma membrane that's going to surround the cell and kind of let it have a different environment inside and out, and finally the ribosomes. So those are the four things all cells are going to have in common. Now, cell theory is just kind of some important facts about cells. First thing is that any organism that we're talking about is going to be made of at least one, but possibly more cells, and metabolism and heredity have to occur. So what I mean by that is to be considered to be living, you need to have a metabolism, some way to use energy, and you have to be able to recreate yourself, basically, and pass your genetic information on. Um, Second thing, this is the most important thing you could ever get from this class, cells are the basic unit of life. Okay, so if you're going to get anything from this class, that's the important thing. Cells are the basic unit of life. And then this third one here, cells are only going to arise by the division of a previously existing cell. So we don't have cells just coming out of nowhere. Back in the day, they used to think that that was what happened. Um, they would see like mold start to grow on something and be like, oh my god, that just came out of nowhere. That's not how it works. So um, they have to come from a pre-existing cell. <clears throat> and if you want to talk about where the first cell came from, take my Bio2 class because we get, go all into that. All right. Now, if you think about cells, you need a microscope to see them because they're very small. And that makes sense because you want to not have a lot of space where if something comes across the membrane, it has to travel to get to something. So they're very, very small to encourage that. Um, now, the one thing that I noticed is like when I think of cells when I was learning them, I thought of them as this flat thing. And some of them are a little flat, but they still have that three-dimensional shape. So what's going to happen is as cells get bigger, they're going to actually increase in volume as well, right? So the surface area is increasing, but the volume is increasing as well. Um, We've talked about eukaryotes and prokaryotes. Eukaryotes are going to be 10 to 100 micrometers in diameter. And so if you look at prokaryotes, eukaryotes are about 10 times as big. So bacteria are way, way smaller than our cells. Um, <clears throat> so how do we see them? There's a couple of different ways. Um, the first way is using a compound microscope. 
So a compound microscope is what we use in our lab here at CCD. So you can pass light through the specimen, and the cool thing is the specimen can actually stay alive for the process. The only problem with compound microscope is that you can't get really, really, really small. Like if you wanted to see a virus, there's no way you could see a virus. Um, the next type is called a transmission, whoops, sorry, transmission electron microscope. And that actually is going to pass electrons through the specimen, and that's going to give you an image of what they look like inside a little bit better. And then you've got a scanning electron microscope. And what a scanning electron microscope is going to do is that's actually going to allow you to bounce electrons off the surface. So it's kind of like how sonar works. And you can actually get a three-dimensional picture of whatever it is you're trying to look at. So I have pictures of all this stuff to kind of show you um, what it looks like. First of all, here's um, eukaryotic cells up here. You can see they've, they're bigger, they're more complex, they've got organelles and stuff in them. And then here's a bacteria cell down here. You can see no organelles, just very simple. The purple stuff in the middle is just the DNA. Um, all these things that you see here are going to be what are called organelles. And by the end of this chapter, you're going to know what all of those does, which is super awesome. Okay, <clears throat> so... This picture here is showing you a cheek cell, and um, just like from the inside of your cheek. And this is using a compound microscope. Um, the way I know is because that cell is pretty big, so you can actually see it with a compound microscope, and you're not seeing anything in, in massive detail. Now, one thing that you can do is you can stain cells. Um, this one up here has been stained. This one doesn't look like it's been stained at all. And staining just allows it to have more of a contrast where you can actually see it a little bit more easily. Um, you can do crazy fluorescence st stains, which are really neat, but um, we're going to just do basic stains when we do our cell stuff. <clears throat> All right. Now, these are going to be pictures of cilia. So you know how, like, cilia are like those finger-like projections that'll be, like, inside your intestines and stuff like that in your lungs. Um, and this, you can see that these are both cilia, but these are different types of microscopes that are taking their picture. So up here is a scanning electron microscope, and that's the one where it bounces the electrons off. And you can see how you have a three-dimensional image of what those cilia look like. Down here is a transmission electron microscope, and that's where it actually passes the electrons through the specimen, and you can see what the inside of those cilia actually look like. So that's the difference between the two. Now here is a better example of staining that I was talking about. So you can see up here, this is an unstained cheek cell, and down here is one that 